What is the impact of higher interest rates on earnings? Well, I don't think it's a big deal for tech because tech is flush with cash in general, right? If you look at like the balance sheet of Apple and Microsoft, they have so much money, they don't really have to worry about going out and borrowing money. So I think that's going to be irrelevant to their earnings. I mean, they're going to be up like on the big five, like 30% year over year. Um, so they're going to be like, magnificent earnings. Now, it's also priced into their multiples as well. If you look at like Netflix trading at 40 times forward earnings, or you look at Tesla at 74 times forward earnings, that's insane in my opinion. So I think they have problems, and those stocks are pretty much off their highs from two years ago. But overall, this is going to be a very good earnings season. I've talked about this a lot. I and mean, we're going to see positive earnings for the first time in three quarters. Uh, if you go into next quarter, earnings are going to be up like close to double digits. So the full year, we might actually have positive earnings growth. And that should accelerate into next year. And those analysts on Wall Street, they're a negative bunch. So I assume, you know, they're going to come in better than expected for this quarter. I mean, I always bet on Wall Street to be wrong and have that hurdle just too low. I know Bob used to play that game where the hurdle would be really low, that he'd give Wall Street, and then he would beat quarter after quarter. I think you're going to see that here. How do you see that? I mean, you see these tech guys. Look at the massive acquisitions they're doing, the billions of dollars they're able to pay for, like Activision and so forth. They are, but I also you make a good point here is, I mean, you take those seven stocks out of the S&P 500, the S&P 500 trades cheap. I mean, if you look at an equal weight S&P 500, it trades at like 13 and a half times forward earnings. The average company is going to have about 2% earnings growth this quarter. Yep. So I think uh, you're going to see at some point a shift where money you know, moves away from big tech because, again, I think those valuations are kind of silly at this point. Uh, it reminds me a little bit of like when we had the late 90s. But I will say this, and I think this is a mistake, Bob, with all due respect. <laughs> I think a lot of investors right now are sitting in cash, getting their 5%, playing it safe, waiting for markets to quote unquote settle down. But in my experience, markets don't settle down, they settle up. And meanwhile, you've got a 16 year high in interest rates, like lock into some longer term bonds. Yeah. So you've got the bond market on sale right now. You've got equities on sale right now. Um, you know, if earnings growth continues, I think dividend growth will continue. So those yields will go up and baby boomers need cash flow. Um, it's time to get invested now. And I think the biggest mistake is to wait and sit in cash in those shorter term yields. So you, you wouldn't buy an index. You'd, buy, you'd be more laser focused on buying those that are really kind of in the trough right now, right? I just deal with indexes, but, you know, buy a value index, buy a foreign index, uh, buy some small caps here. I mean, the valuations are cheap there. You can buy an index form, but I would spread out. I would diversify. And I think the big risk here is I do think rates are coming down next year. And when they come down, they come down quick. That 5% goes to 3% on your money market fund. It's a big mistake. If, if yeah. rates come down yeah. next year, it has to be a response to a troubled right. macro story. That's what I was so gonna, we yeah. could see rates come down, but that's going to be responding to the economy slowing down because of higher rates. Right? It is going to slow down, but it's going to be positive earnings, I mean, uh, GDP growth, 1.5%. Yeah. And, and that's okay. That's what the Fed wants. Why, why, um, so would, I the think Fed, sorry, why would the Fed cut if GDP growth is still positive because if it slows down uh, from what's well, going to be like four or five percent this quarter uh, then they can cut because conditions are tight enough we already have the 10 year now at almost five percent and the 30 year at five percent so I think if they slow if they slow cut rates moderately next year it's a sign that the economy has slowed down but if growth is still positive that's Goldilocks